Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the last of one of these thrift store rescued consoles that we just uh, recently got. It's really not in that bad of condition save for like you know scuffs and scratches and just like the other two this one was sold as a parts or repair unit. It's got everything pretty much intact. It still has this little cover here for the extension or external device connector right there here's the power button we got our input there headphone the volume knob feels okay like it turns up and down the brightness however uh, it just kind of rolls so we're gonna have to see if we can do something about that or if we can even fix it it powers up it has uh, no audio and as a lot of people that might be familiar with these things will already know they're just notorious for having like terrible capacitors. The screen, as uh, some people that are familiar with these will also know that they're pretty terrible. Like the viewing angle sucks, the the contrast is, uh, is pretty bad. I mean, it, it is visible. And it seems the capacitors are probably also affecting the image a little bit. Knowing that we were gonna be taking a look at this, I actually went on eBay and picked up a few appropriately themed Sonic games. So I got these five here. And we can use these to, to test the thing because I didn't have any uh, previously, so pick these up. So let's go ahead and pop some batteries in here. <laughs> One, two, three. And as anybody who's even probably like remotely familiar with these things will know, these things had like, are notorious for having like terrible battery life. So you constantly have like a, either keep a supply of these things if you're going like on a trip or something or have like an external a battery pack. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that it's uh, powered off right now. So let's go ahead and stick in a game We'll just stick with Sonic since that's a uh, pretty well known. Oh, whoops. It was oh crap <laughs> It was on apparently <laughs> Whoops, okay, so Now we've powered it up. We should boot the game and holy crap. You can barely even see that see how bad that is So yeah game loads and you can play it if you could actually see it uh, we can tweak the brightness here but like I said it's see it kind of it gets bright but yeah so we got some screen crap going on up there so there we go you can see the map there and it's like I said it works it's just not great there's actually a replacement screen kit that you can buy for these that's called like the McWills uh, something or other it's a much better LCD than the one that originally came with this thing and maybe in the future we might look into replacing that if, if I can get my hands on one but yeah at the moment we'll just stick with the with the original screen oh as uh, far as the audio like the, the volumes all the way down right now I'm gonna turn it all the way up and yeah you you can't hear anything it just audio doesn't work but that's uh, like I said it's it's due to the bad capacitors or at least it should be due to the bad capacitors with all that said let's go ahead and uh, open it up and we'll take a look. I already have all the capacitors on hand. As I mentioned in uh, one of the previous videos, I actually bought a bunch of parts on a DigiKey that were meant for all these projects that I had going on. So what we have here on the back is we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six regular, like number one Phillips heads in there. And then we have like one of the e torques up here. And I don't know why they did that, but they did. And the funny part is that the e-torx there is like, it's like in a really easy to access spot. So you could even use kind of like a needle nose plier to remove that if you had to. I have the, the bit for that, so it's not a big deal, but yeah, no clue why they would have done that. All right, so that's all the screws removed. So the back will come off, but there's a uh, stuff attached. So just gotta be careful. See, we got a couple of connectors around here. So I'm just gonna pull those off gently, hoping I don't pull the cables off of the connector there oh whoops wrong side <laughs> up here I almost forked it so up here we have the power supply board and the switch here so there's a few capacitors there that we're going to be replacing on this side we have the audio board and we have some SMD capacitors that we're going to be replacing this is the main board and this is what's uh, what I found is known as like the two ASIC model there's some that like are single and I think there's like another revision of this board. I don't remember what it's uh, referred to as. These capacitors over here 
will need to be all replaced. I don't think there's any on this. Uh, oh yeah, there's one right there. So that's gonna have to get replaced. This right here, that's the that's the little CFL that lights up the screen. This is our brightness adjustment, and oh yeah, that's kind of like broken off the. Looks like it's broken off the shaft there or something. So we'll see if we can fix that. There's a bunch of crap down here on the audio board. I'm not sure if that's uh, flux residue from this filter that's right here or if some of this is leakage from that capacitor. On the main board up here, you can actually see what's uh, evidence of leakage from like that capacitor there. Oh, and there's another one right here. Yeah, definitely telling that these are no good. There was two screws holding this board down. There's two screws holding this board down and then there's four that hold this shield there in place. So after removing that, then we can go ahead and pull all this stuff out. There's this plastic here that has some double-sided adhesive underneath that needs to come off. So that will allow the battery terminals to lift off of the, the casing. The audio board is, uh, yeah, this one's pretty nasty. <laughs> Look at the bottom of this thing. That's all capacitor juice that's just kind of spilled all over the place there. And uh, pretty much coated everything. I think what I'm going to do with this board is I'm going to bake it overnight to remove as much moisture as I can out of the this fiberglass material because I don't want it to delaminate. And that will allow me to use hot air to both remove and reinstall the new capacitors. Even though I could do what some people do is they grab these with like pliers and they twist them off and, and break the legs. That would work. I'd rather not risk pulling up any of the pads even though I think the risk of that is uh, it's fairly low so other than that the board doesn't look too bad look at this plated hole it's it's pretty got some corrosion on it and if we look inside the case where that hole was we can see that some of the electrolyte is kind of like leaked onto the that standoff there and the screw that was in that position has some corrosion going on it as well so I'm gonna clean that up while I'm at it make it look nice and for the top of the case, the board had a total of like 12 screws here. So now I should be able to remove this. I should just lift off the case, I believe. Yeah, just like that. And oh, I gotta be careful with that. Is that the LCD? Oh shoot, yeah, that's the LCD. I don't wanna pull that off. So there were supposed to be four screws on the other side of that. Okay, so I've replaced the four screws there that hold the LCD in place. So now it's not gonna fall off. And if we look at the other side of the board, there's definitely signs that Electrolyte has leaked over this side, so that's going to need a cleaning. And because the capacitors that I've got are not this sort of, I mean, it's kind of like an SMD design with the pins going like that, but I just have like the standard radio capacitors, and I'm going to have to take the, the legs and bend them all to form them so that I can solder them on the way these are, these are on there. You can buy kits that include all the capacitors, like on eBay or whatever. You just uh, put in the type of board that you have, like 2 ASIC, 1 ASIC, whatever. Pretty much all of them are going to be like the, the through-hole kind. So let's go ahead and start. But I got to go get all the capacitors out of the box first, so give me a sec. All right, so I've gone through all the capacitors that I ordered and separated into the ones that I need for each board. So here's the three for the power supply board. Here's the five for the audio board, and here's uh, whatever that number was for the, the main board. First of all, I'm gonna put a little bit of flux around the pins of all the capacitors that I'm going to be removing. So this one, this one, and this one right there. And now they should just easily come off. All right, that one's finally out. Ugh. Yeah, there's a bit of corrosion underneath though, so we're going to give this all a good cleaning too. Okay, there we go. All three of those are removed. <laughs> Surprisingly, that's the cleanest one. And I don't see any corrosion on it. So, who knows? This one might even test good, but we're replacing it anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's been quite a few hours now. More than 15, but I think less than 24. And I've had these boards uh, baking on the infrared uh, preheating plate. So now I'm not too worried about heating this up with the hot air to remove all these SMD capacitors and having the board delaminate because that's what I'm trying to avoid. So we're going to be able to do this now. I've also removed the potentiometer for the brightness control. We'll deal with that. Okay, I've been heating the board up from below a little bit 
And now I'm going to switch over to one of the nozzles and try to focus the heat more directly where the capacitors are. I'm trying to be really careful here because I do not want to melt these connectors and those are probably going to melt the fastest. So uh, now that I've got it somewhat heated here, I'm going to put the nozzle on if I could find them. Oh, here they are. Okay, and I'm going to apply some flux around these capacitors. It should flow readily since it's already fairly warm. And it is. Now I need some tweezers if I could find those. Okay, this solder here should have flowed already. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oh, they are glued down. That's why they're not coming off easily. Well, that one was. This one wasn't. How about this one right here? Uh, yeah, that one's glued down as well. So the small ones aren't, but the bigger ones were. There we go. Okay. As best as I can here, I'm using a blade and trying to get as much of this adhesive off as I can without damaging anything else around it. I just want the new capacitors to sit as flat as possible. Now I can go ahead and clean up all the old solder off of these pads. We're going to get them some nice fresh solder. We're going to do this process in reverse now. And I'm going to put flux on the board here where all the pre-tinned pads are for these capacitors. And then we're going to put a capacitor on top of every one of these pads. Okay, there's a capacitor on every pad now. And if you kind of notice, they look all wonky, but that's because I haven't reflowed them yet. Okay, I think we should have some pretty good heat going on now. So now I'm going to go ahead and more directly blast them. From underneath and we should see them flow into place okay these may need a little help getting into position but there it goes okay there's the first one that one's in place now let's hit the rest now that one's kind of sitting down and it is good Okay, these are going too. Nice. Okay, so there's that. Actually, not bad. I'm not too thrilled with the way some of these solder joints look, but that's probably because I put a little bit too much solder on each one of those pads, so they look a little blobby, but that's not a big deal. They're sitting fairly well for the most part. This one here, the can came crooked out of the package, so it just kind of looks that way. There's uh, nothing wrong with its positioning. It's just the, the can is rotated slightly. Got the main board prepped now and I ended up taking off the lamp and it looks like it actually wasn't even necessary because of the way it it goes on there. The lamp actually comes off and this back reflector is easy to remove but it's just one less thing to have to worry about so no big deal. It's only two wires anyway. The majority of the capacitors on here are actually going to be fairly easy to remove. The solder pads are fairly easily accessible with the exception of this one down here. This one is kind of in between this transformer and this connector, especially the pin right there inside. Uh, the other two on this side, those are going to be a breeze to take off as well, so no big deal there. I think I should be able to just blast these with hot air. I can just do it from the top here because it's not like I can heat up the whole board, and I really don't want to just because of the of the LCD. Just a little bit of localized heat at the, at the pins of, of the capacitor should be enough. I'll add some flux. Let's start with these two here and see how easy it is hopefully to just heat them up and and pull them off so here we go oh yeah that's not too bad so the board's been clean now all the pads have had the excess solder removed so it's uh, nice and clean got rid of all that cap juice that was all over the board I could just go and take the new capacitors and just kind of put the pins down like that, the leads, and tack them down and solder them. But then that means that they're going to look something like something like that if we look at it on the edge there. So they'd be kind of slanted and that just would not look good in my opinion. So instead, what I'm going to do is bend and trim the leads so that they look nice and flush like this and as you can see 
they would uh, sit fairly flat on the board. I can tack each pin down to one of the pads on the board and it would just be an overall like cleaner look, I think. So let me show you how I did this real fast. I took this little piece of copper that I just happen to have around here and placed the capacitor like this. And since the negative side needs to be on the right side, if we're looking at it from the back, I would need to bend the leads down in this direction. So now the leads look like this. Now I take the duck build pliers and I put them up flush against the body of the cap just like that. So now it looks something like this. And I bend upwards like this. And so now we have that. And then the only thing I do after that is give it about an 80 degree bend or basically almost like a total of 80 degrees right there. I think I need to give it a little more on this one, but you get the point. Something like that. Trim them off about a couple millimeters. And there we go. Ready to tack down. And there we go. There's all the capacitors ready to go. I mean, nobody's going to actually see it, but I want it, if you know I'm going through this much effort, I want it to at least look nice. Now the way I'm going to put these onto the board is I'm going to put a spot of solder on one of the pads in each spot where there needs to be a capacitor. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to do one of them here and I'm going to make sure not to do too much. Okay, now that that's done, I'm just going to put a little touch of of RA flux on each of the pins on each capacitor. You're not going to be able to see it from this side. I'll show you on one of the other ones, but I'm just going to tack this one down on the one pad where I put the solder blob. And there we go. That one's in place now. So let me show you with one of these other ones here that's more visible how that's going to go. So let's see. Let's pick C37 up here. A little bit of flux on that. I'm just going to try to hold it down here as aligned as I as best aligned as I could. That and tack that pin down. And all set. The main board's complete now. All the capacitors have been replaced and I've given the board a fairly good cleaning. In my opinion, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I tried my best to kind of keep the new capacitors within the footprints of the old ones or where they would have rested. I didn't so much scrape a lot of the adhesive on this board because there's a lot of traces that run under some of those. I didn't want to risk nicking them. And they were already pr pretty flat to begin with, so I didn't worry too much about it. I just wanted the capacitors to look nice and neat and almost like as if they were meant to be there by forming the legs and everything. So that is all those capacitors finished. And I've replaced the backlight reflector. I just haven't soldered the fluorescent lamp back in just yet. The other two boards, this is the audio board after giving it a cleaning in the ultrasonic bath. I also removed the volume potentiometer off of this one because I didn't want that to get affected by the water. And I'm actually kind of glad that I did remove it because there is a little bit of capacitor sauce underneath it. And that's the bottom side. This pin right here is a little wonky. I'm not sure why that is, but it looks like it's soldered fairly okay. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. And this is the power supply board. Okay, this uh, cleaning in the ultrasonic bath as well. I did remove the inductor that sat on that side over there. I just didn't want water getting in there and then possibly causing some issues by it like not drying properly or something. So I left that out. And here is the potentiometer for the brightness control. It actually came apart while I was uh, kind of just handling it a little bit, but it's okay. I think I have an idea of what we can do now that I see how it's built. There's supposed to be this little stop right here, like that little tang that kind of comes up right there. And that's supposed to kind of stop it. I don't know if maybe at some point somebody just like powered through it and kind of bent it. Because you can see this is kind of like bent outwards. And that center pin where, well, it's supposed to be the shaft that the, that the knob rides on. Uh, it's a little kind of cocked to the right there. I think we should be able to get it working okay again i mean the resistive material itself is still intact so that's not going to be a problem okay so for this thing first of all i want to get that little tab or tang or whatever you want to call it the the stop bent back into a shape here so we're just going to take these these long pliers because it's the only one i have that actually closes at the tip and i'm just going to try to bend it back a little bit all right i think that's as good as that's going to get Okay, so now this sort of hollow shaft there, 
I think what we can do about that is I'll take this pick, place it right in the center, try to bend it back. Hey, that's not bad. Okay, maybe it needs a little more this way. Okay, I think that should be fine now, right there. So on the wipers, first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give them a tiny bit of a lift just to make sure that they make proper contact. Oh, that whole thing comes off. That would have been nice to know. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's the actual contacts. This has some indentations there, so this thing can really only go in one way, so it goes in something like this. Since the center sort of broke out a little bit, I should be able to stick that shaft back through that hole. Uh, first of all, I am going to give it a little bit of a spray with some contact cleaner, though, just to make sure this is kind of like nice and lubed up in here. Place this back on. Okay, so that's back on now. And that shaft there looks like it's centered, but of course, if I don't do anything about it, this thing's going to shift to the side just like that. And that's what we don't want. So we want this to remain as centered as possible. And now I can actually feel it stop where it's supposed to stop. And if I rotate it, it should stop on the other end too. Yep, it stopped there. So my idea is to get a tiny screw and maybe like a small washer or something. I might even have to make something and place it so that it sits right in the center of the knob. And it keeps it, you know, from being able to like move side to side. So let's see what I have that we can use. We're going to look inside of the tubbo screws here. And I'm going to dig like way deep down at the bottom. That's where all the tiny screws go. All right, I see one right here. This tiny one may be a candidate. So I'm just going to pull it aside. Ah, that looks a little too fat. Well, we'll set it aside anyways. Here's another one that may be a possible candidate. Although it looks like it's about the same width as the other one. So I'm not entirely sure yet, but we'll set that one aside. Here's a really tiny one. This probably came out of a watch a long time ago. Oops, dropped it. Uh, there it is. So I got a few here now. Not sure just yet which one's going to work the best. But so, yeah, the idea is to get a screw that's going to just sort of fit in there and have the head kind of fit in the middle where it's going to be able to hold the, the knob just kind of centered. That one right there actually looks pretty good. If I could get that one to to thread into that into that shaft that's going to be the hardest part these are all about the same this is the tiniest one right there the only problem is this one has a very small head so it's not really going to be able to center that shaft in there very well at all i would have to make like a small washer tiny enough that it's not going to fall out easily i mean there's not a lot of force on this knob you know kind of like pulling like trying to pull it off or anything like that so i'm not really worried about that it's just actually keeping it consistent where this thing's going to be able to work properly. All right, let's try something here. First of all, let's try to thread this little tiny one in here and see if we can at least get like some thread started. And then maybe we'll use one of the slightly bigger ones. All right, that was kind of an exercise in frustration and I couldn't get it to go in. So I have a different idea here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this where the shaft actually is, where you see the pick kind of sticking out here. On top of this... Uh, it's like some sort of a retainer thing. So I'm just going to place it on top of here. And I'm going to smack it from the top and try to enlarge the hole just slightly. And then I'll try to use one of the other screws that has a little bit of a better head on it. Hopefully I don't mess things up here. Okay, and I think I'm already starting to see another problem. Is that the opening on the knob is not big enough to accommodate for a, for a bigger shaft now. So I'm going to probably have to enlarge that just a smidge. <laughs> Okay, the new hole's overall diameter is going to have to be slightly bigger than the screw itself because it's going to be threading around the, the shaft there. So this is the drill bit that I think might work for this. And I'm not going to put this like on the, on the Dremel or anything. I'm just going to use one of these like hand attachments. And I'm just going to try to gently enlarge that hole and trying to keep it as centered as possible. Okay, so I've enlarged the hole somewhat. Now let's see how this is going to work. All right, that's still able to sit somewhat centered because of the fact that that, that little tab there kind of sits in the groove. I mean, it's still able to kind of wobble around a bit, but that's fine. Okay, so let's try to enlarge this hole a little bit more. 
All right, that uh, kind of stretching action there kind of tore the side here a little bit, but I'm hoping that'll give us enough room to be able to thread the, the screw in. I believe it was gonna be this one. And this one has a, a nice head on it, so I should be able to get a pretty good, oh yeah, it's gone. Hey, that might actually work. Okay, this did not quite thread the way I wanted it to, and it feels a little weird. But the bottom here is also bulging out a little bit. So let's see if I can straighten that out. Maybe that'll kind of fix the issue. But at least the screw kind of threads in and out. And, oh, geez. That ah, looks terrible now. Oh, crap. Well, since I had messed up that shaft quite a bit and uh, it wasn't really going to work the way I wanted to, I decided to just completely remove it and instead make this screw thread all the way down into this base. So now this is threaded for, for this screw. And I think what we can do now is just go ahead and reposition everything and just make it somewhat snug, not too tight. Okay, that's uh, a little too tight there. It's not allowing it to rotate. And that's not tight enough to hold it. Oh, great. Okay, so if I could find another screw like this one that has slightly longer threads, it might work. Okay, I've got this other one here that has slightly longer threads, but I think the head's about the same size. Nah, it looks like it's maybe slightly bigger. Let's see how it fits. Oh, should be okay enough to center it, so I think that's fine. Let's see how this one will work out. Okay, so that one actually works out pretty okay. It holds it nice and centered, so this thing isn't wobbling around all over the place, and it's really smooth uh, motion, except it kind of just jumped the thing there. Oh, okay, maybe it's not tight enough just yet. Okay, that right there is slightly better. You can see it moves and it hits the stop just fine. The only problem is that it sticks out quite a bit on the bottom. So I guess what I could do is I could just grind it just a little bit, but I'll probably remove it before I do that because otherwise heating it up is going to probably damage the plastic. It's going to melt it. But that actually works pretty good, so I'm think we're going to stick with that. Okay, after a lot of fiddling with it and having to grind down the head on that screw a little bit just to get it to fit inside of the, the inner diameter there a little bit better, uh, it's finally okay. It actually works pretty good. It keeps it nice and centered. This doesn't move anymore. And one thing I did kind of anticipate is by doing this, I am going to have to raise this potentiometer off the board just a tiny little bit because now this is not going to be able to sit flush with the board. So that's a little too close to this side of the case. It's gonna rub a little bit, so I'm going to try to rectify that a little bit. I ended up just grinding this thing down a little bit just to make it as flush as I possibly could. And I think I was able to achieve that. Uh, it's down to the point where you can actually see where the metal of the screw and the this bottom plate kind of thread together. So unfortunately, I think I've made it where this thing is not going to come apart, but I guess that's also a benefit when you think about it. It's actually able to sit fairly flush on the board. That's it for all the electronic components. I like the way this sits now. It's uh, much nicer and flush with the board. So all capacitors have been replaced and every capacitor on all these boards is a Nishikon. So I'm hoping that, you know, this it lasts for some time now that it's got good capacitors in it. So the only thing left to do now is to give the casing a little bit of love and then we'll be able to reassemble it and give it a go. One last thing I want to do to this case here before we put it all back together is see if we could polish up this plastic a little bit just to kind of make it look a little nicer. You can replace them. They're readily available like on eBay and stuff. I would just like to keep the original on here. And it's got like a few little kind of light scratches on the plastic there. So we'll see if we can make it look a little bit better by using a little bit of this uh, Magan aluminum <laughs> polish. And uh, yeah, something got on this and made everything like flake off, but whatever. And then we'll finish it off with some plastic polish. So let's see how this turns out. Even if it improves it just a tiny bit, yeah, I'm fine with that. I know it's not gonna look perfect, but, and the whole reason for masking this off is just to avoid making the surrounding plastic a little, a little more unnaturally shiny than it should be. Okay, so 
it did make an improvement as you can see it's pretty clear there are still some surface scratches but like i said i didn't expect to get rid of everything one thing i did kind of notice though is that the polish sort of started scratching up like right here where the where the text and the graphics are and i think that's because this is actually painted like really close to the surface and i didn't realize that i thought it was kind of like underneath and it's really not so i guess what i should have done is i should have just kind of masked off like everything right there that's not actually like clear plastic but i um, mean you know, oh well i'm gonna have to just kind of live with that now but overall it did make quite a bit of an improvement to it so i think that's okay for now there appears to be a dust bunny rolling around inside the speaker grill Let's see if i can get it out without removing the speaker ah there it is that one's so bad looks like there may have been a spider in here at some point all right, both halves are ready to be reassembled, and we'll just put some batteries in after this, and we'll test it out before actually putting all the all the case screws back on, because if I have to open it up for whatever reason, well, kind of pointless to have to remove them all again. Bad? I think it looks pretty good. We are finally ready to give this thing a go. So I've got six batteries installed, and we'll just put the battery lids back on. And we'll pop in Sonic. And here we go. Hopefully, if everything goes okay, it'll work fine. I got the volume somewhat up, not like all the way. And I've got the brightness kind of in the middle somewhere. So let's see how this goes. And here we go. Hey, it's working. I can't see crap, but let's see. That's probably the brightness. Well, that's uh, not good. <laughs> I'm not getting anything on the display. Okay, what is going on? Yeah, I don't see anything at all. All right, so I've identified the problem and it's uh, kind of sort of my fault. <laughs> I made a teeny tiny little fatal mistake, but I mean, it's not dead. It's, it's just kind of more of an annoyance really. But anyways, Underneath the reflector and the fluorescent lamp are these two fuses. So there's that one right there and there's that one right there. And as best as I can tell, they're really faded, but I try to focus on them as best as I could. It looks like there are 1 amp 250 volt fuses on both sides. But not only are they fuses, they are thermal fuses. So basically what they're doing is underneath, they sit underneath this sort of like rubber cap right here on the fluorescent lamp on both sides and so what those would be doing is if this lamp gets too hot it will blow the fuses well where I screwed up was that when I was or at least what I'm pretty sure is where I screwed up is when I was removing the capacitors on this side and I was using the hot air and just you know kind of heat in this area and I have the temperature set fairly high so that I could get the solder to melt these thermal fuses look like they're rated for 100 degrees C, which is way below the level that I would have been, you know, hitting this area with here to get that solder to melt. So I'm pretty sure that's what happened because this is the one that's uh, open and I was heating up this area here with these capacitors. Uh, this area over here, the, capac the closest capacitor is like way over here and I'm pretty sure that, you know, I wasn't like hitting that area with like too much hot air. So yeah, this is the one that's uh, open. And unfortunately, that's not really something I have on hand, and I haven't really been able to find very many online. So what I've done, if we focus in here a bit, is I've run a really thin wire from this end over to the other end. And that's going to be enough to get it working for now. It's not really something I would want to do as like a permanent solution if I was planning on keeping the fluorescent lamp working. But if I eventually end up replacing the original LCD with like one of those uh, newer... Uh, LCDs that I was talking about then the backlight is really not going to be like necessary at all because it doesn't use it anymore so for the time being we'll just jump this across but at least we'll be able to see the game you're actually working now and we know that we have sound so it's processing and doing everything I didn't kill anything else thankfully so it should be working all right I've got the lamp back in place everything's been reconnected so now we can close this back up just temporarily and let's go ahead and get our game And here we go. There it is. Got the backlight. Uh, the contrast is pretty crappy, but that was expected. 
So, yep, it's working. We got sound. It's funny how it just, it looks so much better on camera than it actually does in, like sitting here and like in front of it. But yeah, there's the brightness all the way up. Turn the brightness down. Yep, it's working pretty good. Looks like a blurry mess when I'm running around here, though. <laughs> so, yeah, it's working pretty good. Let's try some of the other games real quick. That's uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. There you go. No problem. There's like a line that we kind of see like going down. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell now, but let's see if I... Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. So there's, it's kind of like darker, like right here in the middle, and then the outsides are kind of a little bit lighter. I guess that's just something about the, the way the LCD works. I mean, it is like fairly old technology, so... Sounds pretty good, too. So yeah, those capacitors definitely made a big difference. Well, that's working pretty well, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the rest of the screws on. So, there we are. It's all back together. It's working great. The audio works again. The contrast knob is fixed, so... I mean, other than the screen looking so kind of washed out, but... I mean, that's uh, basically kind of the charm of the thing, so... I don't know. What do you guys think about the whole LCD replacement? Uh, let us know in the comments, I guess, and... Uh, I mean, what or some good games for this thing. I don't I don't even really know. I never had one as a kid. I, I mean, I saw them as a kid, but I uh, never actually owned one. So this is the first for me. It's going in the collection. And uh, overall, I'm fairly happy how it turned out, except for the uh, sort of little scratches that I put on the, on the plastic lens up here in the front. But yeah, unfortunately, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. Well... There we are. Another project completed. So thanks guys for watching once again and I'll see you guys around the bench. Let's try some Sanic Spitball. There it is. <laughs> Get a chance to do anything. Okay, how do I? Oh, okay. So... Are you freaking serious? <laughs> Okay, maybe I don't miss the 90s as much as I thought I did. <laughs> 